Yo, what's up everybody? Paul Hickey here with NoOffSeason.com Sports Card Content Network. Super pumped to bring you the first episode of the Football Card Strategy Show. And I kid you not when I tell you that this is the most power-packed 49 minutes that you have ever heard. Andy Kaysen, our host of the Football Card Strategy Show from Football Card Quest on YouTube, brings the fire like no other. You may have to listen to this episode two or three times, but don't worry. It's recorded for you on the NoOffSeason.com Sports Card Content Network. Everybody get ready to enjoy episode one of the Football Card Strategy Show as Andy tells you how to build your football card championship strategy right now because there is no offseason and it's not just a quarterback thing. He takes you position by position as well as tells you the impact of the offseason moves and the NFL draft. All right, Andy, take it away. Welcome to the NoOffSeason.com Football Card Strategy Show. I'll be your host, Andy Kaysen. I'm very excited to be partnered up with NoOffSeason.com and Paul Hickey from Sports Card Strategy to bring you guys the highest level of football card investing intel uh, based on my experience with studying the market, spending countless hours fully dedicated to football cards. I come from the Football Card Quest over on YouTube where we have over 300 videos specifically on football card investing and collecting. And I have over 10 years of fantasy football experience, uh, playing it at a high level, really diving in um, and wanting to win my league championship, win some money, and also beat my friends and earn those bragging rights. Uh, I love the strategy behind it. Uh, I'm an engineer by day, so you know the analyzation and the research uh, and the strategy development, I absolutely love all those factors of it. And I was a collector as a kid in the 90s, uh, fueled and inspired by my dad. He took me to a lot of card shows. We collect a lot of cards. And fast forward to today as an adult, I played fantasy football for over nine years. And whenever I found out about Gary V going on the Rich Eisen Show, one of the more well-known NFL broadcasters talking about the upcoming sports card boom, I had to check it out for myself. And I saw the insane amount of variance in in sports cards sports cards that never existed when i was a kid back in the 90s uh and i went online on youtube to look for information on how i could take my fantasy football knowledge and apply it to football cards and there was nothing there so i saw this as a perfect opportunity to create this information uh and so Fast forward to today, we have over 300 videos and very excited to be partnered up with NoOffSeason.com because this is the time of the year when we build our strategy for the upcoming season and we build that championship investment portfolio. Uh, so very excited to be bringing in my advanced fantasy analysis to the variances and the nuances of the sports card market. Uh, because as we know today, there's over 4,300 different Joe Burrow rookie cards. However, there's only one variation of Joe Burrow you can draft in a fantasy draft. And so in the football card market, you can make moves year round. We're actually coming off a red hot hype cycle where a lot of people, including myself, have made some nice money on football cards, selling them uh, coming off of the Super Bowl through free agency. This has been a history historic NFL offseason with the trades and the different team changes of Hall of Fame caliber players, which has led to a lot of speculation and hype around what these players are going to do in the upcoming season. And that has apexed into the NFL draft where all these teams get the chance to hit the reset button and strengthen certain areas of their rosters. And now we head into the true off season or the true low where prices will historically dip here in May and June, only then to pick up once we get into mini camps and training camps and then preseason and then the regular season starts and things historically have been red hot in September. But the NFL player pool is very large. We're talking, you know, the typical fantasy draft has about the top 300 players going. Well, in in totality, there's over 500 players in the NFL. If each team, 32 teams in the NFL, has a 52-man roster come the first week of the season, you can do the math there. There's a lot of players in the NFL. And so uh, it really pays dividends to understand how these different NFL structure their personnel, how they 
run their offenses, how they run their defenses, the strengths and weaknesses of each division, the playoff probability of these teams. And then you add in like looking at their fan base. How many fans do they have? How many potential collectors and investors do they have? Uh, and then from there, we understand that quarterbacks drive the market. But we know that for quarterbacks to be successful, they have to have these supporting cast characters around them. And we know that some of the biggest highlights in the NFL come from running backs. They come from wide receivers, tight ends. They also come from defensive players making splash plays on defense like sacks and interceptions. Um, and we've seen spikes following the market on eBay closely every single day, every week for the past two seasons now. I have picked up on a lot of different trends that can be very useful. So I'm excited to share all of this knowledge with you guys here on NoOffSeason.com Football Card Strategy Show as I bring you and Paul and the team new episodes every month uh, talking about football card investing strategy. So we're going to talk about who I'm buying and who I'm selling right now based on these players' current expectations and whether or not I think they're going to overperform or underperform those expectations. Um, therefore, is that going to drive their demand and their hype up or is that going to suppress or drive their hype down, which leads to a decrease in their card value? Um, and then we're going to talk about timing, like when I think is the best time to buy player X and sell player X. Um, and of course, we're going to take all factors into consideration, including the fact that, of course, quarterbacks drive the market. And then we've got wide receivers, running backs, tight ends. And then we've got defensive skill position players, the edge rushers. We've got the corners, the secondary defensive players. Uh, and then we've got interior defensive linemen, linebackers that are all over the field as well. We're going to take all these guys into consideration. We're going to talk a little bit about all of them. And much like playing Dynasty Fantasy Football, where once you do your startup draft, you're literally stuck with these players indefinitely until you cut or trade them, we're going to be taking their age or their rookie status and their contract situation into our scope. And so I want to first start off by talking about quarterbacks. And I'll just uh, talk about the two top quarterbacks that I believe should be good investments right now, if you can find deals on them. Of course, everything that we talk about in this show, it's very important to comp those out, to look at previous sold items of the same card, or take a comparable player with the same card or same level of scarcity. Take a numbered out of 99 for Justin Herbert and take a numbered out of 99 card for Joe Burrow to get an idea of which of where they're being valued at because Joe Burrow's just coming off of a Super Bowl whereas Justin Herbert didn't quite make it there actually eliminated in the final week of the season in overtime against the Raiders and so but what he did to get there was absolutely incredible and the Chargers have strengthened their defense they've strengthened their offense uh, and they're now in a prime position to make a Super Bowl run in 2022. However, it's gonna be very difficult. Um, but when we when you look at his age, you take his age in consideration, he's going into only his third year in the NFL. So we're gonna comp the values of Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts, and Tua Tunga Vailoa, all 2020 rookie quarterbacks now going into their third year in the NFL, all have made significant improvements to their team this offseason. Joe Burrow coming off of the Super Bowl. He's got arguably the most expensive, followed by Justin Herbert. They're pretty much neck and neck. Uh, but if you can find deals on Justin Herbert that are going below Joe Burrow, I would buy them because uh, I think that the Chargers are primed. You know, there's a saying in the NFL that defense wins championship. They added Khalil Mack, one of the elite edge rushers in the NFL from the Chicago Bears. They added J.C. Jackson, one of the elite defensive secondary from the New England Patriots and free agencies, which was one of the best signings in free agency. Um, you've got Joey Bosa on the other side, uh, who is an elite edge rusher. You've got Derwin James, who's an elite secondary. So they made a ton of improvements to their defense during this offseason. They strengthened it even further in the NFL draft, and they strengthened their, their offense. They added depth to running back, wide receiver, additional resources for Justin Herbert. They brought back deep threat Mike Williams. So I love potentially finding deals on Mike Williams. He's a guy that flashed big time, had some big spikes in his rookie cards. He's a 2017 rookie. He comes as a very high draft pedigree being drafted early in the first round from 2017, um, which generates a lot of hype easily for him whenever he has these big three, four touchdown games with Justin Herbert in big primetime scenarios. They're going to be playing the Broncos twice. They're going to be playing the 
Chiefs twice. And they're going to be playing the Raiders twice. So right there, that's six primetime games. Plus, the Kansas City Chiefs will host the Los Angeles Chargers in week two, September 15th, for the first Thursday night football game of the year. This game is going to be massively hyped up. Um, and there's going to be a lot of football card market movement based on the performances that these players have in that game. Um, and we can pinpoint we can pinpoint performances down to a pretty good level. We can make some solid projections based on our fantasy football knowledge, understanding which players on the team are getting the carries, which are getting the targets from the quarterback. Um, and then we can project out a model of what Justin Herbert output is going to be like based on his athletic metrics, based on what he did in similar games last year, based on the coaching staff and how they like to run their offense. We can project out these performances and not to say we're always right but more often than not we can hit on a good number of these and the goal is to win more than we lose and especially in football cards the thing is you have a much longer sales cycle right it's not like daily fantasy where you're picking a card just for that one night and flipping it if you're buying a card off of ebay typically it's going to take three to five days to get it to you you're going to examine the card then if you immediately relist it you're still looking at a potential one to two week sales cycle at the least uh, so you're really looking for someone that's not just a backup running back that's going to fill in this one week you know we're looking for someone that's at least going to have an effect on their team for the next month with a team you know taking that fan base into consideration and are they a winning team like are are they trending towards the playoffs so we can look at their strength of schedule the upcoming schedule um, and look at their overall stance in their division um, and projecting out how they're how they're going to make it to the playoffs so Justin Herbert is one of my favorite uh, quarterbacks to invest in even if I'm you know tending to pay a premium for his prism rookie cards that kind of thing. If, if they're graded in good condition, these are still highly liquid, highly demanded cars. We see tons of sales volume on them every week. And I believe that the Chargers are setting themselves up to make a deep playoff run in 2022. The other quarterback that I absolutely love investing in is Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. A, they have the largest fan base in the NFL. Dak was on track in 2020 before he suffered a pretty horrific ankle injury to pass for over 5,000 yards. Last Last year he was right at 5,000 yards and they came and they came got to the playoffs because they also had a top three defense in the NFL which is very important uh, so you combine those factors with them having improved the defense this offseason they've improved the offensive line throughout the draft and, and now we're heading into a new season they still have the same head coach in Mike McCarthy so there's a little tiny hesitation there, but just based on the market size and based on the fact that Dak is now extended uh, throughout the next several years with the Dallas Cowboys, quarterbacks being able to play well into their mid to late 30s, potentially if you're Tom Brady, you could play to your 45. Uh, but with that fan base and the fact that they're in a soft division in the NFC East, you know, they're they're looking at playing the Commanders and the Giants and the Eagles, who the Eagles are definitely going to be firmly in that number two consideration here in the NFC East. But if you look at the NFC in totality, you know, outside of the Bucks and the Rams and the Packers and the Cardinals, you know, all the rest of those teams, you can very easily see the Dallas Cowboys beating them just based on their run and pass game and how good their defense is, right? So when we're projecting out that model and we're comparing and looking at Dak Prescott's rookie 2016 Prism rookie cards are going for less than or the same as 2016 rookie running back Derrick Henry. Uh, they're going for considerably less than 2017 rookie quarterbacks like Deshaun Watson and uh, Patrick Mahomes. And so I love the current price point of Dak Prescott's rookie cards from 2016. I feel that they've got a lot of room for growth and that's one of the important factors that I look at is actually the entry price point that you can get into these cards at because that's very important because if you wanna sell high, you gotta buy low. Uh, that's important. It's it's a much harder to buy in at a premium or buy in at a higher price point and expect that to continue to go up because they've really got to exceed expectations. They have to continue to exceed expectations like in Justin Herbert's case, I would, I expect him to exceed expectations even as a top-ranked seasonal and dynasty-ranked quarterback 
based on the improvements that team has made, I believe that this is going to be a monster MVP caliber year for Justin Herbert. And if that's the case, then yes, his car prices are going to go up just like we saw for Patrick Mahomes. Um, and that leads to a nice selling window, especially in the playoffs when we know that is the hottest hype cycle for the NFL. Nothing, nothing does more for players cards in the NFL than the playoffs and the crescendo in the Super Bowl. So that's the determining factor that leads me to want to pay a little bit more for Justin Ro Herbert's rookie cards over that of Patrick Mahomes in the same division, but Patrick Mahomes rookie cards are just astronomically expensive. And when you're already spending close to a thousand dollars on a base prism raw rookie card of Patrick Mahomes, it's hard for to expect that card to continue to climb. You know, so those are my top two right now in terms of quarterback that have that combination of upside and safeness uh, in, in mid to long term investing, just based on the the outlook for their football team. Uh, but let's talk about some running backs because there's some very interesting developments. And, and as we go on, we're going to talk about more speculative quarterback investments and guys that I feel are going into their second year in the NFL that I think could pop here or guys that have been kind of forgotten about that could pop as we go into future shows. So definitely stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed. Follow along. All that good stuff. Ring the bell. When we talk about some, some running backs here. I actually like investing in Christian McCaffrey as a flip for September. Uh, we should finally have him fully healthy, but what I get most excited about is the recent draft from the Carolina Panthers taking Iki Ekwanu in the first round at pick number six in this draft that just in the NFL draft that just ended. He's a t arguably the best run stuffing offensive lineman in the draft, nicknamed the Pancake King. He's from North Carolina State, so he grew up in Charlotte. He's a hometown boy. He's an absolute massive human being. All right, and uh, nicknamed the Pancake King because of all the run stuffing pancake blocks he made at North Carolina State. Panthers prioritized by drafting him first. They still don't have a great answer at quarterback Sam Darnold, who has shown to not be very good in his scan progression, not be very good at uh, passing the ball at times. So they're going to lean on that run game. They added depth in Deontay Foreman. They've got Chubba Hubbard behind Christian McCaffrey. So Christian McCaffrey, being a first-round rookie pick from 2017, still not even 26 years old this is a prime year for him to finally bounce back he's still going as the number two running back in fantasy football however his card prices have considerably dropped down to where in a lot of cases they can be found for cheaper than the number one the clear number one running back in jonathan taylor um, and it's just these bell cow running backs with these lion size workload shares in terms of getting carries and receptions out of the backfield are very rare and Chris McCaffrey is one of those rare breeds. So I think he's a really interesting investment option right now heading to May if you can find some you know, auctions of him. Because let's face it, the Carolina Panthers have a below average projection to make the playoffs, especially in the NFC South when they're clearly behind the Saints and then the Bucks with Tom Brady coming back. It's going to be very hard road for them to get to the playoffs. But we do get excited about a 100% Christian McCaffrey who has previously been the number one running back in two consecutive years in a row. And so we saw what the 2020 sports card boom did for his card prices in September of 2020. His card prices were astronomical. I mean, we're talking almost $100 for a base prism raw 2017 base prism raw um, which is also happens to be silver from that year it's the only year and the only sport that panini did that they printed 2017 prisms as base prisms as silver so something a little tidbit there for you guys about the card market but christian mccaffrey where he's currently at now in some cases i've seen his raw prism from 2017 a very liquid card a card that has a great gem rate that you know has a 90 percent plus chance of getting a nine or a ten so a, a great grading candidate um, and i've seen the, that card go for five ten dollars uh recently in auctions that end throughout the week when a lot of people maybe aren't paying attention and maybe they're out on carolina or maybe they're snake bitten by christian mccaffrey's injuries over the past couple years but he's now got the best opportunity of arguably his career um, and he's only 26 and we've seen the production of running backs really peak around 27 28 years old 
And so my second favorite running back to invest in right now is 2020 rookie A.J. Dillon on the Green Bay Packers. Absolutely love investing in this guy. If you looked at his athletic profile at all, he's got a 95th percentile height adjusted speed score he's absolutely massive he clearly never skips leg day uh you know he runs close to a 4-4 at his size of over six foot 250 pounds of just pure muscle he's also excels out of the backfield in the receiving game so he's a guy that catches passes and runs the ball you've got aaron jones heading into the final year of his contract who prior to uh, this past year was getting the bulk of the carries and targets, but A.J. Dillon creeped his way in towards the final year of his rookie year in 2020 when uh, Aaron Jones struggled with injury, and he showed to be very efficient, very efficient at breaking tackles, juking guys out, also catching the ball, which is something that Aaron Rodgers likes to do a lot, throw the ball to his running back. So what we saw happen last year was Aaron uh, A.J. Dillon become more and more of a 50-50 split with Aaron Jones. And now with Aaron Jones having hit that age apex for running backs, you know, going to be 28 years old this year, whereas A.J. Dillon is just going into his third year in his prime, you're going to see A.J. Dillon take over that backfield. And we know that the Green Bay Packers have a diehard fan base that are rabid for high performing athletes and also coming from the nfc north the packers have a really good shot of course at making the playoffs again led by hall of fame quarterback aaron Rodgers. they just got him uh, an excellent college prospect and christian watson uh, a receiver in the early in the second round who has got some really good looking contested catch ability breakaway speed they also improved their defense they prioritized their defense in the nfl draft this past year so uh, aj Dillon, and the the bonus about him is the fact that he is an avid collector and investor of himself in terms of his own cars like this guy goes after his one of ones this guy openly does psa reveals on his instagram page does breaks uh, openly collects cards and is an avid sports card enthusiast so you like to see that just hobby relevance alone could be enough one day to drive values of his cards up to the next level plus all these other factors that he's able to put out on the field make him a no-brainer investment for me especially when i comp out and look at the huge price disparity between him and jonathan taylor and i know jonathan taylor is a true bell cow um, and was the number one running back in the nfl last year on the Colts who also look to be in a pretty good spot there in the AFC South but you know with everything else that AJ Dillon's got going on I think that he could at least get to you know 60 to 75 percent of what Jonathan Taylor's value is at especially as one day we're talking maybe 2023 AJ Dillon is now the bell cow running back receiving and rushing running back for the Green Bay Packers one of the bigger fan bases in the NFL you absolutely love that and you still have got Aaron Rodgers in this three-year window uh, playing at championship level football before he retires so I absolutely love having a piece of that for the next couple years and and there will be many many windows within the next few years to sell that card for a profit as well for wide receiver i go back to the super bowl contenders cincinnati Bengals, and i'm not talking about jamar chase even though he was absolutely electric and that's where most people focus their their money and investing in the cincinnati Bengals outside of joe burrow that's the first year rookie jamar chase from last year that college you know connection that him and joe burrow had was electric plus jamar chase is so elusive he's got a target separation ability um, and he's going to command 20 to 25 percent of those throws from joe burrow himself but i'm actually going to talk about t higgins who is the contested catch deep ball specialist for Joe Burrow. And the one thing you want to understand about Joe Burrow is he loves to target the open receiver. He's very good at going through his scan progressions and reading the field. Um, and he's a very accurate passer. And he's very good at making those decisions in very quick clutch moments, right? And so we've seen him hit T. Higgins 
quite a bit. In fact, T. Higgins had over a thousand receiving yards last year. He had two touchdowns in the Super Bowl. Uh, the guy is great against man coverage. He's great in contested catch scenarios. Uh, he's a great route runner, and he's just overall a really dynamic, great wide receiver. I've got him close to the top of my rankings based on the team he's on. They're going to be right back in the thick of the playoffs. They've improved their offensive line dramatically to give Joe Burrow protection. They've improved their defense, their defensive secondary, their defensive line. They've added a lot of depth there throughout the NFL draft. So the Bengals are going to be right back in the thick of it in 2022. Um, and with how much people focus on Jamar Chase, if you can find deals on T. Higgins that are a lot lower than like the wide receiver one in Dallas, C.D. Lamb, or if you can find them like half of what Justin Jefferson, the wide receiver one on the Minnesota Vikings, or you know, if you can find his prices similar to that of like Brandon Ayuk and San Francisco from 2020, I like to comp the, sim the same scarcity of card across multiple players from the same draft class to get an idea of kind of where they're at in, in terms of card value you know, with the same scarcity throughout that draft class. So I kind of paint a prediction of what the floor for that card value is and then what the ceiling is. Um, and then I can, you know, pick and choose my entry price point on a specific card. And and so I love investing in T. Higgins because he's going to have those big boom weeks, guys. He had a monster four touchdown game towards the end of the season last year against the Baltimore Ravens, at which point his cards absolutely spiked astronomically. Um, and I made some good money off of him during that time period, then again throughout the Super Bowl. So you can see how that process kind of happened. And then I look at a guy that is on my Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And so, yeah, I am a uh, born and raised here in Tampa, lived here my entire life, obviously a diehard fan of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But when it comes to fantasy, when it comes to card investing, I completely remove myself from that situation and, and take a, a very analytical, you know, Bayesian-based approach and look at the evidence to kind of discern uh, a projection of what's going to happen in 2022. And Chris Godwin is coming off a late season ACL test. And it wasn't a bad one because he was literally running around on the sideline after that injury, like trying to come back into the game. But nevertheless, it was a minor one. <clears throat> However, with modern sports medicine technology, players that, you know, tear these ACLs, that rupture these Achilles tendons, to have these Liz Frank fractures in their foot and stuff like that, they come back. They come right back, guys. There's very, very few career-ending injuries. It's very, very rare. In fact, the injury that Tua Tungavailoa experienced in college, the hip uh, the hip injury that he experienced was very, very similar to that of Bo Jackson from the 90s. Well, that injury for Bo Jackson in the 90s ended his career. For Tua, he's still playing in the NFL for the Miami Dolphins. We'll talk about him uh, a little bit later in another episode. But um, I absolutely love investing in Chris Godwin for 2022. He's probably not going to start the season, so there's probably not going to be a ton of hype or buzz around him heading into 2022. He's also got a high gem rate and a lot of really nice available products being part of that 2017 draft class out of Penn State, you know, and so he's got an incredible athletic profile, guys. He was dominant at Penn State. He had over a thousand receiving yards last year from Tom Brady. He's a guy who's incredible after the catch, right? Tom Brady targets him in the intermediate, the shallow, and the deep sectors of the field. Um, in fact, if you look at his red zone targets across the entire NFL, he was number four in red zone targets last year with 26 red zone targets from Tom Brady. So that's a, a tremendous amount of opportunity to convert into scores, which turn into big highlights, big plays, a lot of media coverage. We know that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers led by Tom Brady are going to be right back in the playoffs in 2022. Uh, it should be no surprise there. So you know what I'm saying? Guys like that are going to be part of a playoff run. He's going to be part of a playoff run at Tour the end of 2022 so are constantly comping out his values and if you can find deals a buy low he's a very safe investment plus he's got a lot of time left in the nfl you know the guy is just turned 26 years old so a lot of time left in the nfl he's got at least four more years at an elite level he just signed a three-year extension with the buccaneers and with tom brady in a win now window you know we're looking at a definite playoff hype cycle and some hype cycles throughout the season and big primetime scenarios, big game scenarios where it would be um, it would be easy to sell Chris Godwin cards for a profit because at any given game, when he's healthy on the field, he could rip off a three touchdown game and get a lot of get a lot of hype, a lot of coverage. 
when it comes to tight end, this is uh, very much a consolidated focus. Um, and, and this year, I look at Mark Andrews on the Baltimore Ravens as the clear number one tight end. Now, of course, Travis Kelsey has kind of held that honor uh, for the past several years. But Mark Andrews took over that last year, right? I'm just getting an insane amount of targets from Lamar Jackson. Even Lamar Jackson's backup in the games that he missed, Tyler Huntley, still targeted Mark Andrews at over a 20% rate. And Mark Andrews' ability to get open in the seam, he's an incredible route runner. You know, as a tight end, he's very good at run blocking, pass blocking, and running routes, getting open, and converting that into touchdowns. Man, the guy's a touchdown monster. So I look at Mark Andrews as the clear number one tight end in the NFL for 2022 the baltimore ravens just improved their defense dramatically throughout the draft they're going to be a run heavy team they traded away marquis hollywood brown who was their sub 4-4 field stretching wide receiver so this is going to put even more targets because marquis brown had 145 targets last year from lamar jackson a lot of those targets have got to go somewhere we talk about vacated targets uh, i think you got to you know, bump up Devin Duvernay and Rashad Bateman or wide receivers in their depth chart. But of course, Mark Andrews is now going to be a bona fide tight end one. Uh, potentially, I think it's, it's, it's very easy to see him. He's probably got the safest floor out of any tight end in the NFL. And the thing is, his card values are significantly lower than that of Travis Kelsey. And you put together a couple more amazing seasons like Mark Andrew put together last year and even the year before he was a top five tight end. All of a sudden, you start putting him into Hall of Fame tight end considerations. Uh, and then Lamar Jackson's extended with the Baltimore Ravens. That's probably going to be upcoming at some point this year. And that, that puts a, a, a much longer window to where uh, Travis Kelsey can perform at a very high number one tight end in the league level with Lamar Jackson. Um, that's the kind of guy you want to invest in. He's going to be around for a potential playoff run with the Baltimore Ravens. In any year, because based on their coaching with John Harbaugh, incredibly good coaching. You've got now they improved their defense, defensive line, and defensive secondary big time throughout the draft. My secondary tight end is a legendary one, and that's Rob Gronkowski, currently not signed with the Bucks. And I, hear me out, guys, because again, this is using a Bayesian model, right? We're in a buying window for him. Think about the hype cycle that will be generated once he signs his deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's already expressed that, um, you know, that uh, kind of playful nature that he's kind of giving it back to Tom Brady because Brady, un you know, retired and then unretired. But during that time, Gronk was like, wait a minute, man, you're retiring on me. I thought we had another year to run it back, you know, try and run it back again. And so he's kind of just, you know, letting Brady kind of give him a dose of his own medicine there. But we have all intentions. Right now, there's reports of him working out with the Bucks, and it's likely he's definitely going to sign at least a one year extension with the Buccaneers to run it back again with Tom Brady and when that happens we're going to see a price hype spike not to mention Rob Gronkowski is a top three all-time tight end with the receiving yards and touchdowns he's got from Tom Brady and still playing at a very high level when on the field with Tom Brady and so with his fame off the field you know he's a he's a fame in WWE and wrestling he's very well known he's well known throughout all of social media there's not very many people that don't know who Rob Gronkowski is he's much like Tom Brady you know that fame is is there for them even if they were to stop playing football today their legacy would be cemented in stone which would provide a very nice safe floor, floor to their card value so right now with the unknown certainty of whether or not he is going to play people aren't just like you know, running to eBay to buy his rookie cards. And I think you get some really wonderful uh, rookie cards from his rookie year in 2010, especially that Topps Chrome, or look at those rookie contenders, or any of his autographed cards. He's got some really cool penmanship from 2010. I think there's still a lot of value in those for those to just kind of slowly go up over time. You know, you have that, that aspect of a bona fide Hall of Famer, plus you know, still potentially playing, running it back again with his Hall of Fame quarterback. And once he signs that extension, I think we see an immediate hype bump for Gronkowski. So I think now is the time to buy into him if you're comping out and finding some good deals uh, on his on his product. And even product uh, in veteran, like product in his Buccaneers uniform. The same thing with Tom Brady applies here. You want to look for rare cards in his Tampa Bay Buccaneers uniform. That's going to have a lot of collectability factor to Tampa Bay fans, especially especially as they go into the playoff cycle uh, 
in the upcoming January. For defensive players, we definitely saw some price spikes last year for defensive players, specifically one 2021 rookie phenom drafted in the first round, number 12 overall pick from 2021 by the Dallas Cowboys. Again, that biggest market base in the NFL, America's team, right, since 1979, Micah Parsons defensive linebacker edge rusher from penn state this guy is an incredible 100 percentile height adjusted speed score we're talking 6'3 246 pounds that runs a 441 if you saw him at the pro bowl um, activities i mean he pretty much outrun tyree kill and nick chubb in that contest now i know tyree kill got a little bit off to a, a slow start but micah is an incredible athlete running uh linebacker and edge rusher and they put him uh they put pressure on the qb a lot he had some incredible sacks including strip sacks and some games where he blew up last year and you talk about some of the more immobile quarterbacks that they play against in the NFC East, uh, and the decent mobility around uh, Daniel Jones and, and Carson Wentz. But all, all in all, I, I think that Micah Parsons has got the capability, again, of being a defensive player of the year. He is at that very elite status, that level of, as a defensive player uh, that can make these huge splash plays. And he's got a full suite of available rookie cards. He was number one last year in tackles for loss, number one in sacks last year for 13. And that's as a rookie. So Dallas has only improved their defense throughout the draft here in their offensive line, the interior. So it, I expect him to take have some games that are just as impressive, if, if not even more impressive in year two, as he becomes more and more familiar with the NFL system and the NFL field. So he's by far and away my number one defensive player to invest in if his prices have cooled off. Otherwise, I'm going to look to target Khalil Mack on the Los Angeles Chargers. I think these edge rushers on a new team have the ability to make these big splash plays and especially when they're headed to the playoffs and they're already on a Hall of Fame trend for their career. We look at what the Super Bowl did for Aaron Donald of the Los Angeles Rams last year, man. That was incredible. We saw incredible hype spike, incredible price spike in his rookie cards. Well, Khalil Mack is actually from that same draft class. Uh, and you can find some really nice deals on his rookie cards. And this is another guy just with an insane athletic profile, speed, power, uh, the, the quickness to get to quarterbacks. And whenever you put him in those prime time scenarios, he starts taking down strip sack and a guy like Patrick Mahomes on that first Thursday night game in the NFL, all of a sudden we see a demand spike for Khalil Mack's rookie cards. It is a real uh, possibility. It's something that, that does happen, and we do see this take place in the football card market. So, um, and especially with the prices in conjunction that you can get some of these guys' rookie cards at, like a Khalil Mack, like Micah Parsons. Some of these are very appetizing, have a lot of room for growth. You can find an autograph card for around 10 to $20 of an athlete of their caliber. It's a home run. And coming fresh off of this 2022 NFL draft, there have been some blockbuster trades that have definitely impacted teams one way or another. You look at Hollywood Marquise Brown going from the Ravens to the Arizona Cardinals, reuniting with his college quarterback from Oklahoma and Kyler Murray, where they had this incredible connection. And, and with the target share that Marquise Brown commanded from Lamar Jackson, you can see that Marquise Brown is definitely going to have an increase in his hype, increase in his demand. That's also good for Kyler Murray. That's added weapons. They also drafted the top tight end in the draft, Trey McBride, so from Colorado State. And this is just going to lead to elevated hype for Kyler Murray. He's only going into his third year or fourth year in the NFL, excuse me. And so there's a lot of potential there, and a lot of people have doubted him with the way that they flamed out in the playoffs last year. And so He's going to get a fresh start. He's going to have increased hype this year going into the season. And I think he's a guy that you can see have values go up leading into the season. Uh, he's a very interesting investment prospect right now based on that trade. The other massive trade was... A.J. Brown being traded from the Tennessee Titans to the Philadelphia Eagles, signing a $100 million five-year deal, $57 million guaranteed. This has shown a lot of hype, a ton of transactions in the last few days for Jalen Hurts, the 2020 court rookie quarterback on the Philadelphia Eagles. And the Philadelphia Eagles avoided quarterback altogether. So I think this is a very good sign that the confidence they want to build around Jalen Hurts and his Philadelphia Eagles offense. He's a guy I think is great to invest in this offseason. A.J. Brown, absolute monster. Short, intermediate, deep sectors of the field. Incredible at breaking tackles and 
uh, winning in contested catch scenarios and getting those yards after catch. Uh, and then, you know, you look at Jalen Hurts' PFF grades for the short and intermediate passes are actually very good. He scored in the above average, in the mid-80s for PFF grades or pro football focuses, descriptor grade for how well they do at a certain facet of their game. Jalen Hurts is very good at short and intermediate passes, so the thought is get the ball in A.J. Brown's hands and let him do the rest. Hertz is also a very good rushing quarterback. I can see a lot of hype, especially with that big market size of Philadelphia Eagles. You know, there in Philly, you know, there's a rabid fan base for that type of premium NFL talent. And so A.J. Brown's stock is already pretty expensive. I think this is more or less a lateral shift for him. He was a clear alpha in Tennessee. I think Philly fans are certainly going to get excited. We're going to want to buy A.J. Brown cards now. But what did uh, Tennessee do? They immediately spent that draft capital on Traylon Burks, arguably one of the best wide receiver prospects in the draft out of Arkansas. The guy wears 4X size glove. He's been clocked at 22 miles per hour, top end speed. He's got an incredible ability at winning against man coverage, winning contested catches, getting yards after the catch, breaking tackles. So he's essentially supposed to be that A.J. Brown prototype. He's going to immediately slot in as the wide receiver one in Tennessee. And then at the end of the third round, they drafted arguably the quarterback with the highest upside out of the draft in Malik Willis from Liberty, who went to that small school but has that incredible mobility, almost been comped to like a Steve McNair or a Michael Vick where they've got a really good throwing arm. He can throw 60, 70 yard passes and also run close to a 4-4, break tackles, juke guys out. You know, so can you imagine what would happen uh, after Ryan Tannehill moves on as Ryan Tannehill is an aging quarterback, right? He's a 2012 rookie. He's in his mid-30s. I mean, he's a great game manager with some decent traits, some decent ability here and there. He has led them to the playoffs the last couple years in a row, but they have never gotten to the Super Bowl. Um, And you can see where this transition could happen because could you imagine a quarterback like Malik Willis with the mobility in the arm he has in a run pass options style offense an rpo style offense where he drops back potentially hands off derrick henry he's a beast and of his own of his own right and then they go and pass it to Traylon burks in open space and they can do a lot of really fun stuff with an offense like that so those are two guys to watch out for definitely to invest in early Traylon burks and malik willis the, the one first round uh, draft pick quarterback was kenny pickett to the pittsburgh steelers they got their hometown guy um who tested really well at the combine also had a really good final year due to covid a lot of these college players in this past draft class got an extra year of eligibility and were able to really make the most out of it kenny pickett was one of those guys and so he was probably arguably the most nfl ready quarterback out of all of them and the pittsburgh fan base is massive and they're rabid for a quarterback they're they, they gave Mitchell Trubisky backup quarterback money. And so there is going to be a heated quarterback competition between Mitchell Trubisky and Mason Rudolph and now drafted Kenny Pickett. And there's going to be a tight leash on the guys that they have now because that fan base is not going to sit by around for very long before they put in Kenny Pickett, much like what happened with Chicago's fan base last year and Justin Fields. So if these guys slip up at all, then Kenny Pickett's going to be the new starter. You definitely want to invest in him. He's going to have a lot of hype with the draft capital from the first round going into his first NFL game. They also drafted a guy by the name of George Pickens from Georgia, who is an incredible athletic talent. Just happened to suffer a broken ankle last year and kind of took him out of his final year so that his draft stock dropped a little bit. But he's got an incredible athletic profile. He's also shown to be very dominant at the point of catch. Uh, He's going to be an intermediate and deep ball like threat in that Pittsburgh offense he's going to put a big squeeze on Chase Claypool who's shown uh, that Pittsburgh showed that they have a need for a field stretcher a guy who's dominant at the point of catch who can take the top off of a defense who can win at contested catch scenarios in the intermediate and deep sectors of the field where they've got Deontay Johnson to cover those shallow sectors right and Najee Harris to tear up the backfield but they need a guy on the outs that they can put on the outside that's going to win in those scenarios that is going to be physical win against man coverage and that is George Pickens from Georgia. He's a guy I absolutely want to invest in as well. Uh, some other really interesting, right? The, the the top Ohio State draft prospect, Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson. Uh, Garrett Wilson went to the New York Jets. So this is incredible for 
Zach Wilson on the Jets. He's having a big, I think, Zach Wilson, if you can still find his prices, considerably lower than that of Trevor Lawrence, than that of Trey Lance, than that of Justin Fields and Mac Jones, I would buy some Zach Wilson because there's going to be a hype there. They not only got arguably the best wide receiver prospect in Garrett Wilson from Ohio State, who was incredible route runner, incredible route runner, very good, very good, right? Um, all, all purpose wide receiver who is, is going to be very, very dominant at Ohio State with 25% target share, racking up over 1,000 yards, like extremely productive, efficient, all around, a, a very good wide receiver. Best comparable to that of Jerry Judy from Alabama, first round draft prospect from 2020. They also drafted the number one running back prospect in this past draft, Brees Hall from Iowa State, who was absolutely dominant in his tenure at Iowa State, running a sub 4-4, with his around six foot, 215 pound frame, good in receiving and rushing game. This is gonna be a big downgrade to Michael Carter as Brees Hall is going to command a 60 to 70% opportunity share with how dominant he is in the run and receiving game. And so you wanna look at selling those Michael Carter rookie cards if you have some or staying away from them right now as Brees Hall is immediately gonna step in as the dominant running back and force Michael Carter to that uh, backup role in New York, but overall, you're getting excited about Zach Wilson with the largest, arguably the largest market size in the NFL in, in New York, getting a ton of that media scrutiny, large fan base. People are going to get excited. Same thing with Daniel Jones. They avoided drafting a quarterback altogether. Um, they did draft a really good offensive tackle, Evan Neal from Alabama, arguably the best offensive tackle in the draft, drafted uh, him early. They also got arguably the best defensive edge rusher in Kayvon Thibodeau, a guy you want to look out for, potentially investing in some of his rookie cards. He's going to be personally mentored by Michael Strahan. He's already reached out to him. They're going to personally mentor him. He's got the potential to be the next Michael Strahan in the NFL based on his college resume. So that is something with a lot of potential there. Jared Goff is also a big winner with the Detroit Lions. Not only did they get their hometown hero in Aiden Hutchinson from the University of Michigan, who was arguably the top-ranked defensive edge rusher next to Kayvon Thibodeau in the draft, but they also got Jamison Williams from Alabama who had arguably the best, you know, straight line acceleration and speed as a wide receiver. Now he is coming off an ACL tear from the uh, championship game this past year at Alabama, but he is going to be a serious deep ball threat. He's definitely going to suppress the target share and the opportunity of DJ Chark, recently signed by the Lions. But Jared Goff is a guy who's going to be excited about. Uh, they did not draft a quarterback at all, and they significantly improved the in the trenches and on the defense in the secondary and in the wide receiver. They drafted Jamison Williams. This is going to lead to hype for Jared Goff. I've already seen a little volume in. Increase. I can see us getting more and more excited about him leading into September and leading this uh, Detroit offense for the foreseeable future, at least for 2022, right? And so he comes away as a big winner. Daniel Jones comes away as a big winner. Zach Wilson comes away as a big winner. Um, you know, Mitchell Trubisky, as we talked about, comes away as a loser. Davis Mills, the quarterback for the Houston Texans, comes away as a winner as they avoided quarterback in this draft altogether. They also drafted... John Mechie, who is arguably the wide receiver two at Alabama. They also drafted a running back. They added depth to their offensive line in the first round. And so this bodes well for Davis Mills in 2022, at least to, to make a little bit of a step forward. Um, obviously, he's going to have some, some hype around him as he is going to be a producing quarterback in the NFL uh, at the beginning of 2022. Um, I think, on the other hand, you want to look at selling Marcus Mariota. They did take the top uh, wide receiver in Drake London from USC, who's an incredible athletic profile um, in, in contested catch scenario, just an absolute dog from USC, uh, dominant. They drafted him to be like that Julio Jones type of replacement, but with Marcus Mariota there getting that backup quarterback money, they did draft. Uh, yeah, they did draft Desmond Ritter at the beginning of the third round. As uh, he's and Desmond Ritter is profiled basically as a Marcus Mariota clone from the from Cincinnati. So you know 
if Marcus Mariota goes down or Marcus Mariota falls out of favor, he stops performing, Des- he's going to be on a tight leash. Desmond Ritter is going to slot right in. You know, that doesn't kind of dissuade you from possibly investing in Kyle Pitts. I think Drake London is going to help Kyle Pitts out a little bit. And certainly Drake London's a guy that's going to be a clear alpha on the Falcons like from day one. He's better than anybody there on that team now. But, um, you know, in terms of Marcus Mariota hype, you want to look at selling him. On the other hand, his uh, draft peer from 2015, the number one overall pick, Jameis Winston, definitely gets a hype bump. Uh, the New Orleans Saints avoids quarterback in this draft as well. They also draft Garrett Wilson's uh, counterpart, who's arguably got the most hype because he had an incredible touchdown efficiency from Ohio State. Chris Olave, who's another very fast electric wide receiver, ability to separate, ability to take the top off of defense, ability uh, at route running. And catching and turning those catches into touchdowns is Chris Olave, and the Saints did draft him in the first round. So uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of capital invested there, and Jameis Winston is going to be the QB one for the Saints in 2022. If you can find some good deals on him, he's worth a flyer. They just signed Tyron Matthew. They brought him over from Kansas City Chiefs, arguably a Hall of Fame caliber safety. They improved the secondary, the defensive secondary through the draft. They pr- improved the defensive line. They improved in the trenches. They obviously they drafted Chris Olave. So I think there's going to be a lot of excitement and hype for the Saints as that number two team in the NFC South heading into. 2022. Now, of course, there's more ripple effects and implications and other moves that have been made already this offseason, previous and free agency. We're going to dive into more in future episodes, uh, but I want to leave you guys here uh, today with this. Uh, So I hope you've enjoyed your time and learned some stuff from me on this football card strategy show. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next time on the nooffseason.com football card strategy. So peace, guys. See ya. Well, I don't want to say I told you so, but I told you so. That was the most power-packed 49 minutes I have ever heard anyone spew out sports card strategy information. Andy, well done on episode one of the Football Card Strategy Show. Can't wait to have you back as part of the NoOffSeason.com sports card content network. Uh, Don't worry if you missed um writing down all of Andy's amazing information we have recorded it for you at nooffseason.com so go check out our football card rankings at nooffseason.com as well as the nooffseason.com sports card investment report we want you to save 20% on that amazing premium product by using the promo code nooffseason all lowercase at checkout everybody thanks for being a part of the sports card strategy show the football card strategy show and everything that we've got going on at nooffseason.com i really really want you to check out sportscardstrategy.com join the facebook group subscribe to the podcast feed subscribe to the youtube channel so that you do not miss any more content like this phenomenal episode by andy Kaysen of football card quest and nooffseason.com everybody thanks and have a great day